What is up everybody, it is Auk here back with another video. In today's video, we're back in SM with our Paladin at level 70. Now the goal of this video guys is to not walk through exactly where you should be stepping and how to pull the mobs. If you guys wanna check out my previous SM video, the pathing is gonna be very similar in how to aggro all the mobs and things like that. It's gonna be very similar to how it was at level 60. Here I wanna show you how much experience we get for our boosties at level 70, and also go over the different gear sets you can use because now that you're level 70, you have a lot more flexibility with the gear that you can use, and multiple gear sets will work, all predicated upon certain strategies. And so I wanna go over those three gear sets and kinda of help you guys figure out how you can possibly gear up to be able to do this farm. There's gonna be a lot of people starting to level alts here now that we're about two months into TPC, or I guess a month and a half, and so a lot of people are going to start leveling up alts, and the boosting market for SM, Mara, Strat, all those farms is probably going to continue to rise as we progress through TBC and people want more and more alts. So here you can see that we're starting off at 5,075 out of 38,800 experience. He's level 30, and there's only one person in the group. So you're going to get more experience if you have four people in the group, a little bit less if you have five. And so basically your goal is to bring down the average group level of the party, so me 70 plus 30, so our average group level is 50 right now. If we brought in more people, we'd be able to bring down the party. And then you get the most experience when you have four total people in the party, so three boosties as opposed to four. The experience difference between three boosties and four boosties now, however, is very small, so you might as well just run with four boosties, and you're gonna get pretty much the same amount of experience. As a paladin, always remember that you guys can cleanse off any of the slows in here. It makes it much, much easier than with a mage. You have a high inherent resist as you're running through here at level 70 anyways, but if you guys need to get the resists, you know, you can always put on frost resistance or something like that, but you can just dispel yourself and you'll be perfectly fine running through here. And also remember that you can bop to open up doors. So there I aggroed all the mobs, ran to the door for the cathedral, bopped, and then opened up the door as well. So let's talk about the gear sets a little bit that I would recommend. The first gear set is going to be the Demon Forge Breastplate and Skull Flame Shield. That might sound familiar because that's the same exact gear set that we had at level 60. And in actuality, it's the same kind of mentality as we had in level 60 as well. We want to be a glass cannon. Now, Demon Forge Breastplate and Skull Flame Shield only proc when you get hit, so you have to take damage. Now, that can be mitigated damage, and so you could basically block, let's just say, 22 out of 23 damage. But because you're level 70 now, your block value is likely going to be far too high, where a block will fully mitigate the damage of whatever they just hit you with. And so you can't really rely on partial blocks to get procs of Skull Flame Shield and Demon Forge Breastplate. However, because you don't take much damage at all from their abilities, you're going to be able to heal yourself up perfectly fine with Demon Forge Breastplate and Skull Flame Shield when it does proc. And so what you want to do for the build is you want to maximize your spell power, and then you want to maximize the ability to get hit, basically. So you don't want to go crazy on your defense. If you can get an item that has a good amount of defense and spell power, go for it, because defense is never bad to have. But if you have an item that has, let's just say, 40 spell power versus an item that has 20 defense and 20 spell power, you go with the 40 spell power just so you can melt through the mobs. Here you're going to be able to see that I hit these mobs for about 300 damage per Consecrate tick when everything is going. And so I am starting off with 353 spell power. So I don't have a ton of spell power, but you can see that we're able to just to churn through these mobs. I am getting procs of Wrath of Cenarius, Popped Wings, and I also have, I believe, ZHC on while doing this farm. Yeah, so I have ZHC while doing this farm as well. So with all those things combined, I probably have about 700 spell power. And then the talents really just help boost our experience. So we'll talk about the we'll talk about the talents in a little bit. But focusing on the gear sets, that's gonna be your first gear set. So Demon Forge Breastplate and Skull Flame Shield churn through the mobs. The shield and the chest will heal you for plenty as you kill the mobs. You can always repair outside in Western Plaguelands at the Horde camp leading right into Western Plaguelands. The second gear set is actually going to be based on a video that I just made, and that is going to be a full defense build. As you can see here, by the way, we got 19,000 experience from the first run, so 50% of a level rested for the cathedral. Basically, the goal with the second gear set is to become unhittable, completely unhittable from an, any melee attacks. You could still get hit by casters. However, if you can't get hit by any melee attacks, that means you're probably not going to take much damage in here because the majority of the mobs are melee. And the casters, you have such a high inherent resistance to that they're probably not going to hit you much at all. And so if you get unhittable, I've actually just tanked the mobs for about four minutes. Now, there's a couple of things to remember when it comes to the unhittability. First, that only applies to melee spell, melee abilities. 
some of these mobs in Cathedral and in Library actually hit with holy damage, and holy damage circumvents any kind of mitigation that you have. So you could still get hit by the holy damage, and so you're still going to need some heals. But it could just be even something as similar as as simple as popping bubble and healing yourself will be plenty fine. And so if you run a full unhittable build, you're going to be perfectly fine with living. You don't need to worry about the holy damage. The second thing is that in armory, the mobs disarm. So armory does not have holy damage, but they do have disarm. When you're disarmed, I believe that you can't parry or block. I think you can still dodge. Not 100% sure about that, but I think you still can dodge. So you still have some of your mitigation, but you miss out on a lot of your mitigation. When this happens, you will no longer be unhittable because block is going to be a massive, massive part of your unhittability from the mobs. And so you will still take some damage in armory. Similar to cathedral though, in library, it's going to be so minimal that it's not going to matter. So the second build is basically going to be going as unhittable as possible. Now you might think that you're not going to do much damage because of spell power. Well, spell power is predominantly going to come from two things. One, your weapon. So an easy weapon to get is the Continuum Blade from Revered with Keepers of Time. That has, I believe, 121 spell power. Add on the 40 spell power enchant, that right there is 160 spell power. And then the three consumes Blackened Basilisk, Greater Arcane Elixir, and Blessed Mana Wizard Oil, not Mana Oil, on your weapon will give you a combined 100 spell power. So just from that one item and those two things, you're already at 260 spell power. Consecrate scales at 95% of your spell power, which means that you are going to be able to have plenty of spell power to melt through these mobs. You might not, might not be hitting them for 300 a tick, but you'll definitely be hitting them for, you know, 200, 250 a tick and burning through the mobs plenty fast where you will not die before they do. Then the third set is going to be my favorite set, and that's the set that we showed at the beginning of the video. That is a combination of spell power and defense. Now, this is going to be my set that I'm going to use for most dungeons, and the reason why is I don't want to take a ton of damage. You can see here that I'm just blocking, dodge, parry, miss constantly. And at the same time, I want to be able to pump out a lot of damage. Back at level 60, a lot of the gear either had spell power or defense. At level 70, a lot of these builds actually have both, which means that we're able to get a combination of tankiness and still pump out a ton of damage. As you see here with my 323, I believe, or 353 maybe, spell power build that I'm currently using in this video. So basically what you want to do to get that is you want to get Judgment of the, or you want to get Righteous set, you want to get Tier 4, then you want to pick up some off items that are spell power uh, and defense as well. And so you want to get some, maybe one defense ring and then Wrath of Scenarius, and maybe a spell power trinket, right? So Xanalar and Hero Charm for me. The important thing with this set, though, is to have something called the Figurine of the Colossus. If you guys have not heard of the Figurine of the Colossus, I highly recommend getting it for your prop paladin. Basically, it drops off the last boss in Shattered Halls, any kind of difficulty, normal or heroic. And what it does is every single time that you block, you heal yourself for 120. Now, your block chance is very, very high because every single time that you actually take damage, you're going to have a chance to proc Redoubt, which is going to increase your block chance by 30%. But you also have Holy Shield with our spec, which is going to increase our block chance by 30%, which means every single time that we proc that, we pretty much guaranteed get six blocks right off the bat with that Holy Shield, which means that we're able to, or four blocks, which means we're very able to, very quickly able to heal ourselves up for a minimum of 500. Outside of that, you're going to be blocking a ton though, because your block chance against these guys is massive because they are a lower level, plus the block that you already have. And so you're going to be able to get a ton of blocks and get healed a ton with Figuring the Colossus. Figuring the Colossus is going to be important for most Paladin AoE farms and TVC, so I recommend getting it. I also recommend getting the Wrath of Scenarius. I've talked about this a ton of times in a ton of different videos, so I'm, so I'm not going to just drive you know it into the ground that you guys should get Wrath of Scenarius, but you should get Wrath of Scenarius. It increases your spell power by 132, and it has a 5% proc chance based on each mob that it hits. So each mob that it hits has a 5% chance of proccing it. The formula is not statistically perfect to say that you have 20 mobs, you're always going to have it up. But if you have, you know, 20 to 30 mobs, you have a good chance of having it up almost all the time. And if you have it almost up almost all the time, you're going to increase your spell power drastically. So I highly, highly, highly recommend getting Wrath of Scenarius. The combination of Figurine of the Colossus and Wrath of Scenarius makes this farm completely trivial 
even if you have no other gear, you can just run through with those two items. So those are the three builds I recommend. You have your fully tank build, you have your full spell power build with you know Skull Flame Shield and Demon Forge Breastplate just to try to keep you up. And then you have your final build, which is my preferred build, which is a combination of tanky and offensive with the figure of the Colossus, allowing you to just mow through the mobs. If you do all that, you can see here that it is about 10 minutes per full clear of all three dungeons, which means you could do, you know, the four clears per hour in about 40 minutes. Technically you have five clears per hour, but the reset timer starts when you leave the instance. So after the first hour, you can't do five per hour anymore. The experience that he has, obviously you saw him justing there. He'll tell us the official experience in a second, but I believe it's around 7,000. So he got over a full level. And in this case about, you know, he needed 38,000. So he got about 40,000 experience from the run, which is over a full level. He was rested, but that still means that each of these SM clears, which only takes about 10 minutes, will get half of a level at level 30, even with just one person in the group for leveling up. So this is still an incredible, incredible method to level up there. You can see 6,469 out of 41,600 experience. So he got right on the dot, almost about 40,000 39,000 experience from the run. This is still going to be a really good farm for people to do to level up their alts, to boost people. I would recommend doing this between level 20 and level 36 to 40 range, depending on your group size. When you feel the XP start to slow down drastically, head over to Mara. Now, typically I'd go our standard 0, 31, 30 defense set. However, because SM is such a low level, these are the talents I'd actually run. I would skip out on the shield specialization because we really don't need it and instead put those points into Reckoning so we can have a higher chance to have Reckoning and then just get more mana back or get more health back if you want to use Seal of Light as well, whichever you'd prefer. But Shield Specialization, the mobs are going to hit so low that you don't need the additional damage from the Shield to basically get your block value up high enough to be able to mitigate their damage. Because as you can see here, we have a block value of 63 just as a base, and these mobs should hit us for around 25, maybe with this gear, maybe they'll hit us for like, 35 to 40 so we shouldn't need any block value even with full greens on 